Welcome to Open BXRX on BronxNet. I'm your host, Sanji Lopez, inviting you to get social with us at BronxNet TV on Instagram and Twitter and BronxNet Community Television on Facebook. Before and through COVID-19, the New York Women's Chamber of Commerce has been supporting and helping local small businesses and especially women-owned businesses navigate these hard times, understanding phase openings, the process of PPP loans, and more. Joining us to discuss is Kenya Abreu, the president of NY Women's Chamber of Commerce. Kenya, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. And just to start, um, can we learn a little bit about the NYWCC? Uh, yes, well, we are um, the New York Women's Chamber of Commerce, and uh, what we do really is um, help our women start and grow successful businesses. So um, we, our mission is to really economically empower women, and especially our women entrepreneurs. That's what we do, and we do it um, through just um, the entire um, city of New York and some um, other parts of um, New York State. Right. And um, I'm interested to learn on, in the ways that you've been um, organizing and navigating through these hard times. Tell us about the ways that NYC Women's Chamber of Commerce helped women own businesses in the community through COVID-19. Well, uh, wow. <laughs> Um, the tough times, I, I gotta say, you know, it just, it just came and it like, it hit every, you know, it was, it was just a hurricane that just hit, you know, um, and even though we knew that, you know, we were dealing with the virus and it was coming slowly, we didn't realize how that was just going to, you know, um, change our lives so drastically in just one moment. And especially, um, you know, our small businesses, because when that order came from, um, from the governor to just close down, it was devastating. It was devastating. Um, I remember talking to to the beauty salon owners and having to to tell them that they have to close their business, and it was indefinitely. And you know, um, I'll tell you, it, it was it was terrible. It was it, it was tough. And so what we have been um, doing, we I mean, we we started working remotely um, March seventeenth. And uh, we just continue to work. Um, we change, um, you know, a little bit because what we ended up doing was becoming a um, a center that was just dealing with, um, you know, with COVID nineteen and and everything that the small businesses were going through, um, especially the uh you know applying for for funding every every funding every grant every loan that came our way we immediately notified them we helped them apply for so we became really almost um a, a recovery center for the small businesses since uh, march 17. right and before that um, there were disparities and challenges that minority and women-owned businesses were already facing that the nywcc was already addressing can you tell us about some of those issues uh, yes. Well, we do a lot. Um, I mean, we service um, all women entrepreneurs, but we have a large, large membership that it's comprised of women of color, mm -hmm. especially. And there are many challenges um, just in general that women face, but especially women of color. And one of those challenges uh, has always been access to capital not being able to obtain the funding that they need. And that was even before the pandemic. So imagine during the pandemic what they have to deal with. And it's very difficult. And one of the things that, um, that we discover while um, trying to help them apply for funding, especially with a PPP loan, is um, all the, um, you know, the challenges all the shortcomings um, that are that our women entrepreneurs face, especially in in as I said before, um, minorities, women of color, is the not having um, um, people, not having employees, for instance, on the payroll. Uh, being very small, being, um, you know, a solopreneur, as, as we refer to them, or being just two people, not having the account, the accountants um, that, that, that they need. At, you know, we, we went through this whole thing where women um, were trying to find where their accountants were because they didn't have the documentation that they needed to apply for the loans. It was, it's, it just became more and more difficult and more apparent um, when we were working with them, what, you know, 
what challenges that they're, they're, they're faced, not only through this pandemic, but throughout um, something that we're now trying to work with um, um, to help them face and address those challenges that they have. But accounting, um, the payroll, record keeping, um, you name it, you know, and, and it really became apparent. It became more of a more of a challenge when it came time to apply for the PPP loan and mm -hmm. other sources of funding. Right. That was my next question, Kenya. So as you said, women have always had a hard time accessing the capital funding um, from the city or, you know, in that regard. So I wanted to get your thoughts on the facts that many women owned businesses also face a lack of access to the Paycheck Protection Program mm -hmm. and other financial assistance. What are your thoughts on that? Well, one of the things is, um, you know, is the, the banking relationship. And one of the things that we saw, for instance, the first round was that none of our business owners were getting the loans. All the loans were going to major companies. Mm -hmm. And when we spoke to our small business owners, they didn't even, they, they have bank accounts because they do. They are the clients of, of banks, of all of our, all the banks that we have seen in our community, the JP Morgan Chases, the, the, the Bank of America the TD banks, all of them, but they didn't even have a relationship with those banks. They didn't even have somebody that they can call and say, hey, you know, I need to apply for this loan. Can you help me? So that was one of the problems that we, you, you know, that, that we identified. And then when it came time, finally, when, 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 um, the banks became more friendly, I would say, or, you know, forced to become more friendly to, to our small business owners, that they were still not giving them the the you know the 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 importance they didn't recognize the importance of the small businesses to them and we have to remind them like hey you know these are your clients you got to help them out because guess what if they have to close their door you're going to lose those clients we're not only losing our small businesses and the jobs that they provide but you're also losing them as a client so you know um those was one of the you know the, the issues the lack of relationship with with the bank with the banks and the banks not responding to them um, as they should have from the beginning. Wow. And now that NYC is approaching phase three, many of these businesses are reopening. What are some of the fears and the hopes that you're hearing expressed by the women who own businesses in the city? Wow. Um, I'll tell you, the, the, you know, I've been very involved with the reopening. Um, as you probably know, I sit on the, the advisory uh, board for the governor, um, the New York Forward. And we have been working with the businesses since phase one. And but phase two, um, really big um, in, 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 you know, when it comes to small businesses, because in phase two, you find a lot of the, the the beauty salon owners, for instance, as you know, there's so many of them throughout the city. So we have been working heavily with them, providing the training, helping them with the protocol, help them with with the guidelines to implement all those all those guidelines mm -hmm. and protocols. Not easy. They're being, uh, for instance, the beauty salons, nail salons, that now are set to open in phase three. They're being treated almost as a clinic. Yeah, I see like, being, these um glass encasements yes. and stuff. Yes, they and they they have to implement those. So it really cuts into their day to day operation. It, call, it, it you know, it cuts into their ability to to really grow their business to see as many clients as they can, because right now they can only um, see they can only have um, their operation as you know, 50 percent of the operation, which means also that they can only have 50% of the clients come in. And and that's a lot. And then when you look at like nails, for instance, that open on, on phase three, this is their time. This is their busiest time. Everybody gets their nails done in the summer. Mm -hmm. And so they're not going to be able to do as much as they usually do during the summertime. And it's going to be heavily regulated because that's that's the reality. But what I say to them all the time is, you know, you we you were closed. We were closed. Um, you were closed for three months. So, you know, uh, um, we are open now. We're open and we just have to adapt as much as we can until um, things go back to normal. Absolutely. And I know one of the ways that um, the New York City Women's Chamber helps other owners and business owners get back and adapt to these um, these things, this new the new norm, as you want to call it, yeah. um, is that you have upcoming virtual workshops. And I just want to learn yeah. about um, what your hopes are for women business owners and entrepreneurs and what you hope they will gain from these workshops. 
Well, what we are hoping, um, as I mentioned to you, we're doing the training about the guidelines and the protocols and all of that. Um, but we're also doing the training about the PPP loan. Um, the, the 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 recovery loan. So what we are hoping that they're going to get is that they're going to be more prepared, that they're going to be more ready. That's that's something that this is this is this is a, a, a horrible time, but it's also a time to learn. We have you know we we have an opportunity now, uh, especially as small businesses, to get everything in order, to to take it as a learning experience as well, and to get ready you know to have everything in place because they're still going to we're going to have a lot of resources still coming their way. We're going to have more resources. The city has put out resources. The state has put out resources. We have corporations that are also coming out with loans and grants, but they have to be ready. They have to be ready to be able to apply. And that's one of the things that we are um, helping them do with these this workshops and the seminars. Thank you, Kenya. And our viewers don't know, but before our interview, you had the face covering on, the full face. <laughs> You're still out on the forefront. You're still out here helping minority-owned businesses and women-owned businesses. So thank you for your work. Um, I just want to give the resource to our viewers. How can women business owners get in touch and learn more about NYWCC? Um, they can call us. They can call us at 212-491-9640. Again, 212-491-9640. Four nine one nine six four zero, and they can also um, get in touch with us through our website at nywcc.org. Thank you for your time, Kenya. Thank you. Always my pleasure. Of course. Folks, to find out about resources and more information for small women-owned businesses, please visit, visit nywcc.org. And you can also follow NY Women's Chamber on Instagram for upcoming events. OpenBXRX will be right back. <laughs>